Hey everybody, Tim Norris here, aka Grey Elephant. And Carmen Norris, Femme Elephant. And here we are at the start of our next scenario, Local Heroes. Now during this one, we have to be able to obtain the allies, to be able to close down the locations, and when we must close down all the locations. Now before we actually get into the action, we thought we'd talk a little bit about the attributes we decided to check mark on each one of our characters. Because if you remember at the end of the last scenario, we got to check off another skill feat. Carmen, what did you end up going with? Well, I gotta tell you, with this being about obtaining allies, I thought, ooh, I better check off my charisma so I can get through this scenario, you know? But uh, I just, I don't think that that was the smart thing to do when you look ahead and you see all these monsters we're gonna have to fight and the villains that are, they're getting stronger and stronger. Yeah. So, you know, I just went with my dexterity so that that's gonna help me in all the future scenarios. That's your strength. And I too yeah. felt like this, this scenario to me is deceiving. Okay. Yeah. It's making you think that you should go for your charisma. I went with right. my strength again. <laughs> and the reason I went with my strength is because I've already got a plus two on my charisma diplomacy. And I'm just going to run with that. Um, I don't really see a need to feel like, oh, well, I better boost that again. And all my other attributes to try to get a plus one, I don't feel like they're going to benefit me enough at the moment. I think strength is where it's at at the moment, and I'm going to keep rolling with that for the you know the time being. All right, so anyways, there you go. You'll see her with her plus two on dexterity, me plus two on my strength, and then we'll also have our bonuses on top of that. So we'll be whooping up on some monsters. Are we ready to get into the action? Let's go. Okay, here we are on the Burnt Offering second scenario, which is called Local Heroes. This says that during this scenario... If you acquire an ally, you may immediately attempt to close your location. If you fail to acquire an ally, discard the top card of the Blessing deck. And if you notice that uh, there are no villains actually in these locations, uh, the whole thing is that to win this, we have to close all four of these locations by acquiring allies. So it's kind of interesting, definitely a different twist. And uh, we've got our four locations out here. And uh, Carmen, you want to start with the woods there? At this location, undefeated monsters other than villains or henchmen are banished. And when closing, succeed at a wisdom or survival six check. And uh, there is no permanently closed effect. Uh, next, we have the academy. At this location... On your first exploration on a turn, if you encounter anything other than a spell, after the exploration, you may explore again. That's kind of nice. When closing, succeed at an Intelligence or Arcane 6 check. When permanently closed, you may shuffle a spell from your discard pile into your deck. So the Academy and both the woods are going to be a little difficult for us to close down. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so the waterfront, it says, at this location, when using a weapon, subtract one from each die rolled. After your exploration, you may discard two cards to explore again. When closing, summon and defeat a bandit henchman. When permanently closed, on closing, all characters at this location discard a card. The general store says, if you encounter anything other than armor, an item, or a weapon, after the exploration, you may explore again. When closing, banish a card from your hand. When permanently closed, on closing, add 1d6 random items to this location without looking at them, then automatically acquire the top card. So, well, I want to go where there's a lot of monsters. I like fighting monsters, and um, so that would be either the waterfront or the woods. So, I'm thinking I am going to the waterfront. And okay. where are you going to go? Um... <clears throat> I kind of like the idea of getting through this uh, location quickly, this academy. Okay, I'll so the only thing I don't like about the academy is, is it's got all these stupid spells, but yeah. we got to get through it at some point in time, don't exactly. we? Exactly. I actually had a real nice draw, too. All right. Well, uh, you want to go first or second? Uh, I'll go first. Okie dokie. So, I'll go ahead and flip your blessing over for you. A blessing of Aristotle. And let's get this ball rolling. Ah, whoa! All oh, right! Man, I need right that. off the bat, too. Okay, so a crown of charisma, 
which happens to be just the one item in this location. You want to talk about the lucky place to start. All right, so it says here that it requires a Charisma Diplomacy 5. The powers reveal this card to add one die to your diplomacy check. Recharge this card to succeed at your diplomacy check. I need <sighs> that. Okay, um, what's your diplomacy? Or your charisma? Uh, it's a D6. Okay. I do have a blessing of Callistra. And I have a blessing of Torog as well. Um, unfortunately, neither one of ours matched this one up yeah. here, which would have been nice because we could have recharged. But But if I get it, it's going to replace it. So. Yeah. Uh, it, it's kind of new. It's, it's kind of cool. It's yeah. certainly something I don't think we want to miss on. You want me to go ahead and use my other blessing so you can add an additional D6. Mm, I think if I roll two D6s, chances are I'm going to get five. <laughs> okay. Are you sure? I'm willing to do it. I mean, we need some of these blessings to try to close these locations down as well. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. What? Reveal this card to add one die to your diplomacy check. Right. Which means that whenever you are going to... if it's, As long as it's a diplomacy... I don't have a diplomacy... All I have is charisma. Well, the other thing is it says recharge this card to succeed at your diplomacy check. So, because diplomacy is, I believe, a attribute of charisma, I'm not sure how that works, but I guess you would just roll mm -hmm. a d4 normally. Yeah. So you'd roll two d4s then if it's a diplomacy so only. So it's not as good as I thought it was. Okay. So why don't I just use... This one, maybe, okay. and you not use yours. Okay. I... Well, on second thought, I think all charisma checks are charisma diplomacy checks, so it probably would have helped with all of them. Thanks. And you failed. And I failed. Nice. Even okay. though I used it crud. Well, that kind of stinks. Okay, that was well, kind of a neat card. I get to explore again, so. Um, anything other? Yeah, that's right, because it says at this location, on your first exploration... On your first exploration on your turn, if you encounter anything other than a spell after the expiration... So, okay. Well, and here we go. Okay. So, we have the archer who happened to show up, which means that if you do acquire this ally, you get to close, attempt to close down the location. So, it says that it requires a dexterity ranged 8 or a charisma diplomacy 6. See, that crown actually would have been an instant success. You would have yeah. been able to do it. Okay. Um, so... What's your dexterity ranged? I don't think you have ranged, do you? No, I don't have an additional for ranged. Okay. So my dexterity is a d12 plus 2. So you'd have to roll a 6. Mm -hmm. Now to close down this location, it requires an intelligence or arcane 6. What's your intelligence? Because I know you don't even have arcane. D4. Okay, so why don't we do this? I have a blessing. If you acquire this ally, I will then spend the blessing for you to attempt to close down the location so you can add an additional die. Okay. You think that's a good idea? Well, I wish I had different cards in my hand. Well, I'm really not prepared for this right now because I don't have any allies. Are you thinking about evading the encounter? Yes. Okay, if you choose to evade the encounter, I agree with that. Let's do that then. Okay. I would rather get different cards in my hand, I think. Okay. Now, should I go ahead and use this holy candle and get rid of it? Because I bury the card and we put... Well, but the problem is we've only flipped one oh, blessing right. over, though. Okay. Shouldn't we wait till we get yeah, at least we, around three or so? Yeah, we need more of a discard pile first. Yeah. Okay, so I yeah. went ahead and shuffled her back in. And now go ahead and draw up if you wish. Now, you can always discard cards out of your hand before you draw up if you wish, but I don't I know. The discard stuff. The only thing I would say is maybe one, one of your thieves' tools if you wanted to do that. Okay. Hey, well, actually, uh, Troubadour will He's work well for you. He's going to help out, okay. yeah. So I'll go ahead and flip my card over. And an Attic Whisperer. Okay, so the Attic Whisperer says, check to defeat a combat 10. And it says, before the encounter, each character at your location must succeed at a Wisdom 4 check or be dealt one mental damage, which may not be reduced. Players must choose a Blessing to discard as their damage if they have any. Ugh. Well, it's from the Percy Jackson books. Uh, really? The yeah. Attic Whisperer? 
I don't think I've ever heard of an attic whisperer. Yeah, there was like a skeleton that would talk in the Percy Jackson. That's kind of creepy. Okay, in so my <laughs> my wisdom is a D so oh, a D four. Ugh. So I have to roll a four with a four, or I have to just take damage by getting rid of my blessing of Torog, which there's no sense in me using this to try to add because it'll be what I lose, and I don't want to lose any of my other stuff. So. Okay. And I rolled a four! <laughs> okay, so I do not receive the mental damage, Attic Whisperer. Okay, so let's see. It says a combat 10 to defeat. Um, and I do have my strength, which is now plus two. And then my melee strength, plus three. So I have a plus five, which means all I have to do is roll a five. Oh, wait. I also have a longsword, <laughs> plus one. So that means I have a total of six that I am already so adding to, roll a four. to my attack, which means I only have to roll a four. That's correct. So I roll a d10 for my normal strength, and then I get an additional d8 for my longsword. And yeah, I just got to roll a four with these two. And I rolled an 11. I always... Yeah, my you lucky D10. Roll a 10. I sure do. Okay. okay, so that defeats the. Oh, wait, you've got to remember in the waterfront it says when using a weapon, subtract one from each die rolled. Um, so I still would have had plenty oh, to yeah. defeat this, but uh, we must make sure we remember that yeah. you know we are kind of penalized when fighting here. Uh, and then it says after your exploration, you may discard two cards to explore again. I do not feel the need to do that. That seems like a waste. Okay. So. I'll go ahead and flip your blessing, and it's your turn. Oh, it's a spell. Okay, so it says Holy Light, and it's a Wisdom Divine 8. Can you even acquire that? Uh, no. Okay, so that's just going to be an entire waste, because you can't even acquire this item, so. Yeah. Goodbye, Holy Light. <laughs> okay, so I'll go ahead and flip mine, because you that was a spell, so you can't explore it. Right, right. mm-hmm. Excuse me, I have hiccups. Oh, okay, so now I have a Zulgoth, and he is a combat nine, and it says, before the encounter, put one card of your choice from your hand on top of your deck. Well, let's put my Thieves Tools on top of my deck. Okay, and uh, that's it. So he is a combat nine to defeat, and I will use my long sword. Yeah. So, that is a, I only got to roll a three with a D10 and a D8. So, and I rolled seven, but that would be minus two because of the water yep. front penalty. So I rolled a five, which is plenty still to defeat him. So he goes into the defeated pile as well. Now I will draw my thieves tools back into my hand and Crummy, <laughs> it is your turn. Okay, oh, there she is again. again. All right, okay. so that is a dexterity ranged eight, and you do now you have Trodor with you, and what does he do though? Recharge this card to add one d6 to your non-combat dexterity or charisma check. Dexterity, mm -hmm. excellent. So that means you get to roll two a d6 and a d12. Yes. Excellent, and you do not get to add anything to that. Unfortunately, you don't have the ranged. Abilities. Mm, so. No, I'm still not prepared for closing the location. Well, I can try to help you with the blessing of Torog. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, all right. Come on, hun. All right. So you did acquire the ally this time. Yes. So now you get to attempt to and he was close recharged. this location down. So it says to be able to, when closing, succeed at an intelligence or arcane six check. What is your intelligence? My intelligence is a D4. Here is your D4. I am going to use my Blessing of Torah, right. and hopefully you get lucky and you roll a 6. If not, this is going to stink. 6. Okay. Come on, hun. 2. you got to roll a 4 now. 4, 4, 4. Oh, no! So close! You rolled 5! <laughs> so this location is going to stay open now, yeah. but, 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 okay. On your first exploration, on your turn, if you encounter anything other than a spell, you get to explore again. Here we so, go. At least you get to go again. All right, so a tick wood boar. Mm. It is a combat eight to defeat, and it says before the encounter, succeed at a wisdom or survival seven check, or the difficulty to defeat the tick wood oh. boar is increased by okay. two. 
So your unfortunately your wisdom survival seven. I don't think you can even do that. Can no, you? my wisdom is a d six. So therefore, you're gonna fail at this no okay. matter what. So he's gonna be a combat ten. That's not a big deal. Um. Now I'm trying to see what this does here. Mm -hmm. Uh, recharge this card to add one d4 to your ranged combat check. Um, how does that work? Because your returning axes are ranged, right? Yeah. So she adds a d4 to that then, right? Yes. Okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so keep in mind he is now going to be a combat 10 yes. for you to be able to defeat. So you would normally, now you're going to roll your d12. Your returning throwing my, axe is my, a plus one. I'm sorry, go uh, ahead. My returning throwing axe gets a D8, so... However, I... you are not proficient with weapons. Right. Which means that you now have increased the difficulty by another plus four. Yes. Because, unfortunately, the returning throwing axes are too tough for Marisol to handle. <laughs> right. So now that's going to make him a 14 check to okay. defeat. So this is my uh, dexterity. This is my weapon. This is for the archer. This is because I'm going to recharge my thieves tools. Well, you have to recharge her as well. Yes. Now, do you want to just possibly discard those thieves tools? I was thinking about it. Because you're looking at 12, what is this, a D8? So that'd be 20, 20, 30. You're looking at a 30, and you have to get at least a 14 out of 30 at the moment. Yeah, I'll discard the thieves tools. I'm just, yeah. I know it seems like a bit overkill, but I'd rather you not oh. fail on your check. We've learned overkill works, okay? Yeah, I know. When we I know. don't do it, it doesn't work. So it always well. seems to backfire on us, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, okay. so you got to get a 14 because let's make sure we go over this again uh -huh. as to why. He's a normal check 8 right. combat. She failed at the survival 7 or wisdom 7 check, which increased him by 2, so that made him a 10. Yes. Her return throwing axes, unfortunately, because she is not proficient with weapons, increases the difficulty by four as well. Yeah. So, therefore, he become a 14 Kay. check to defeat. Well, I like to roll the d4 separate, so here we go. Four? Four. Why See, couldn't you have done that I, earlier? But that's why I roll it separate. <laughs> <laughs> now you need ten out of all these. and Yeah, Woo! yeah that, we're, having boar, <laughs> we're having boar soup tonight. <laughs> There you go. Get well, um, I could explore again if I wanted to, couldn't I? No, no because it's you your, only get first to do it your first encounter. time. Okay. Yeah, but you're you're getting through this deck pretty good, so we're gonna be able to. And I think you've only encountered one al ally, so there's one more ally in there. So, okay, so my turn, and let's see what happens. All right, a goblin pyro. Man, what is it with me with all the monsters? <laughs> I said I wanted monsters. I get monsters. Okay, it says check to defeat a combat eight. And it says, after the encounter, the Goblin Pyro deals one fire damage to you. Which uh, we'll make sure we remember that this would not be combat damage. So it is not something I can reduce unless I had something. Uh, real quick, to. we forgot to add the plus one. Oh, it's your return throwing yeah, axe? Yeah, yep, I thought yep. I'd mention it now. Okay. So, okay, let's use my strength melee, which is a five, plus my long sword, which is a six. So I roll a... D10 and a D8. All I need to do is get a 2, but I'm going to have to subtract 2 because I am in the waterfront, which subtract 1 from each die roll. So I at least got to get a 4, basically. And I got 14, which is plenty to be able to defeat the Goblin Pyro. And now I have to take 1 fire damage mm -hmm. because of the Goblin. So I'm going to go ahead and that's what, you know, half plate armor is for. So I'll just go okay. ahead and discard it. And that will end my turn. So I'll flip the blessing for you, and it is your turn. It is another spell. <sighs> Shoot. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and use this holy candle, get it out of my hand. I think that's a grand idea. So read the holy candle. What does it do? Bury this card to shuffle 1d6 random cards from the blessings discard pile into the blessings deck. Okay. Come on, get a six, hon. Two. You got a two. <laughs> I'm just going to put them on the And it is now buried. Matter, shuffle them in. Okay. All right. I should have done that at the end of my turn so that I could have drawn back up. But oh well. Because maybe you could have rolled a three. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, that is true. I see what you're saying. Check to acquire intelligence arcane four. Okay, so your intelligence is four. Yeah. So if you roll a four with a four, and you rolled a one. I rolled a one. <laughs> Woo! 
<laughs> I hate them D4s. All right, so you're all finished up? I'm done. Hey, you got a lot of blessings in your hand, though. Yeah. All right, so my turn. And let's see what happens. Master Work Tools. Woo, these look nice. It says a check to acquire, a dexterity to save 7. Ooh, it's going to be tough for me to be able to get this, but this is really cool. Um, hmm. Look, I got my Thieves tool, and it says, Reveal this card to add one die to your disable check. That's what this is, a dexterity disable yep, check. sure is. So, but my dexterity is a D8. So uh -huh. does that mean I get to roll two D8s? Yep. Oh, yeah. All right. Cool. I'll go for that. <laughs> All right, so I gotta get. All right, so I gotta get a uh, a seven by rolling this twice. So let's see if I can get. It. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> Sweetness, that's cool. I like this. Okay, well, the waterfront says when, after you your exploration, you may discard two cards to explore again. And the thing is, is I've got too many cards anyways. Yeah. So I'm gonna keep my masterwork tools. I'm going to discard my wooden shield and my thieves tools, and might as well just explore again. All right, here we go. This is it. Your ally. Um, he says he's a soldier. Check to acquire is a strength melee eight or a charisma diplomacy six. Well, strength melee, I am already a plus five, and I get to roll a d10, which mm -hmm. means I just got to get a three with this die. And do you want... If you use your Blessing of Torog, you can bless me with two more of these D10s, I believe. Yeah, you don't right? need them. Okay, because I'm just going to say, because I guarantee that I can summon and defeat the Bayonet Henchman that's going to pop up afterwards. But if I do miss this, yeah. it could really stink. Well, that's if all. you miss it, there's, t there's two more allies in that deck, though. Okay. That's the thing. And I got it ha. with a six. Okay. So, I did acquire the soldier. Now I can attempt to close this location. It says, uh, summon and defeat a bandit henchman. So, let's go ahead and get our bandit henchman out of the box. There he is. And uh, good old bandit. Let's see what he's got to say here. We all remember him. So, he is a check to defeat combat 8. And it says, before the encounter, recharge a card of your choice from your hand. Uh, I'll recharge my chainmail. Okay. And if defeated, you may... Well, we were already going to do that anyway. So, all right. So, he is a combat eight. Well, my strength melee is a three plus my normal. So, I got a five plus my long sword is six. So, I have to roll a two hmm. with a d10 and a d8. But I still will have to subtract two off of there. Uh, I rolled a 12, which is plenty for me to defeat the bandit. So, the bandit is defeated. The waterfront is now officially closed. Woo! Our first location is done. And we had a burglar, a guide, a batter ch two battered chests, and an ogre still left in there. So, all right. Uh, that will, I guess, officially end my turn. Okay. So, I'm going to wow. go ahead and... Oh, I had a blessing of gore on my truth. All right. Go ahead. All right. So, another archer. Now, here's the deal, dear. If you do not acquire this archer... And, and, and if we don't, well, if you don't acquire, of course, we're penalized. But this is your last attempt at closing down this location. Otherwise, we're going to have to go through this whole location deck. Okay. Uh, one thing to note is your Blessing of Aristotle matches the Blessing of Aristotle yeah. up here, which means that you're going to be able to recharge it instead of having to um, discard it if you use it, which is great. Okay, so my dexterity is a D12 plus 2. Okay. What I'm going to suggest is is that I can use my Blessing of Gorum. Don't use your Blessing of Aristotle just yet unless you want to. My point is, is that I can use my Blessing of Gorum as well to add to this check here if you want to acquire. Unless you feel pretty confident you're going to get her. But the only reason I'm saying this is because then you can use your Blessing of Aristotle and then you can recharge yours. Um, just a thought. I'm just saying. Okay. Well, here's the thing. Uh, if I acquire her, I'm going to have to succeed at an Intelligence or Arcane 6 check to close it. Yeah. So I'm wondering if maybe you should save your blessing for that. Okay, so you're gonna, what, you are going to use a blessing, though, to be able to... I'm going to use this blessing. I'm going to recharge it. 
So that I roll two d12s. So, okay, here, let, so you're going to use that for the two d12s. And yeah. then I'm thinking when we go to the Intelligence Arcane, we better use both, both of these. Both of them, exactly. Okay, I, I'm glad yes. we're on the same page okay. because I'd rather burn them up. All right. Because this could be great just closing down our second location. So, I'm going to roll a six with these. Come on. It all comes down to this, really. Okay. And I got so you it. got a 14. Hey. So you got that part done. Now, you need to roll a succeed at an intelligence or arcane check six. Your intelligence is a D4. Yep. Yeah. Whew. I need to roll it three times so and get a six. I'm discarding my blessing of Gorum. Hey. And you are discarding your blessing of Torog. One. There's a one. Oh, God. No! Carbon. No. So that's two. Oh, three, four, five, five. again. Oh, I hate you, D4. All right. All right, well, I get to explore again at least. <sighs> yeah, at least that, I guess. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yay. Okay, so you came across explosives, explosive runes. Um, it says check to defeat a intelligence arcane 8 or a dexterity acrobats 10. It says the difficulty to defeat the barrier is increased by the adventure deck number of the current scenario, if any. If undefeated, discard the top card of your deck. Each character at this location is dealt 2d4 fire damage, then banish the no, card. No, this is going to be fun! Well, actually, it's a barrier, and you have your thieves' tools. You're going to be able to... Can you do it? Oh. Both, both of them are lower than 11, right? Yeah, it discard says, this card to defeat a barrier whose highest difficulty to defeat is 11 or lower. There you go. Here we go. And this... Yeah, because they would both be increased by one, which would make this a 9 11. and 11. So, yeah. there you go. So, it's just defeated. And it doesn't say anything about you being able to explore again if you defeat it. So Okay. Because you know, the thing is that you, you probably would have failed the check, and then you would have rolled the d4 twice and rolled 8. You know? That, <laughs> that, that's how it goes. <laughs> All right. So, uh, I'm going to... Hey, you got your potion of glitness. Yeah. All right, so I can go to the woods, or I can go to the general store, and I'm going to go to the general store because the woods says succeed at a wisdom or survival six check, and I don't have very good wisdom nor survival, so I'm heading to the general store. All right, let's see what happens. A mercenary. The difficulty to defeat the mercenary is increased by the adventure deck number of the current scenario, if any. So the combat check for him would be an 11, and it says if you just... I get to explore again, too. All right. So I'm going to use my long sword. So that'll give me a D8 and a D10. So that would be a plus six. So that would make him a five I have to get. And I got it because I rolled a 10. So that will defeat the mercenary. And it says here at the general store, if you encounter anything other than armor, an item, or a weapon after the exploration, you may explore again. So I get to explore again. Oh, great. Stupid mace. All right, so it says uh, strength melee four. I am going to be able to get it automatically because I'm a plus five anyway. So I get you. There you the mace. go. Yay, mace. Congratulations. Well, too bad I can't, like, discard it to explore it. Though. That's <laughs> the thing. Okay, ready? You going to stay there or you want to move? Well. Might as well just keep going. Here's the problem. If I move, I have to succeed at a wisdom or survival six check. Look, two spells have been pulled out of here, which means that there's three spells left. These are all three spells. Okay, so that's going to conclude part one of Local Heroes. And we've closed down one location. We've still got three open because, unfortunately, we failed yeah. to close down the Academy, which that was a tough roll. Yeah, it was. I mean, anytime you got to roll a D4, you just, you know, it's hard. Well, is this where we kind of maybe... When we were talking about, well, let's, you know, check mark our strength and our dexterity, maybe we should have taken into account that we're going to have to make yeah. checks to try to close down these locations. Not so much acquire the allies, but to close down the exactly. locations. Exactly. That's what I'm, I'm starting to worry about, my intelligence, my wisdom, my survival, you know, because those are typical for closing down locations, and they're just not up there. Never question your intelligence. <laughs> You're a smart one. <laughs> now me <laughs> well hey we'll have part two up shortly so you guys can see the exciting conclusion this will just be a two-parter and see if we can possibly close down these last three locations and defeat the local hero scenario maybe thanks for watching bye-bye